Welcome back, Bastion family. All right, so today I'm here with my dad, and we're going to be doing a cooking video. If you guys did not know, my dad is from Louisiana, so everything he makes is authentic and made by my mama, Joan. What she learned from her mama, what she learned from her mama, all the way to the, all the mamas is how we know how to eat around here. Yeah. So we're going to be cooking today some authentic gumbo from Louisiana. You guys have been asking to see my dad cook, so this is video one, but don't be afraid. We're going to have a ton more. Yes. So gumbo is like Texas barbecue. Everybody's got their own way of doing it. Theirs is the best. Everybody does it different. You can put whatever you want in it. But yours is the best. We do a chicken and sausage gumbo, and that's it. You can have a seafood gumbo. We don't put shrimp with chicken and sausage. You grow it up, that was a waste of shrimp. You made shrimp gumbo or seafood gumbo. We're gonna make a chicken and sausage gumbo. So growing up, my mom always used the hen. A hen is the, uh, a bigger bird. It's a little tougher. You can cook it for a long time. It makes the gumbo a little thicker. I like that. We don't have a hen. Oh. So we're gonna take a chicken, cut up the chicken, make some chicken stock, and then we're gonna debone the chicken. That's a sin in most parts of Louisiana, but that's the way we're gonna do it today. Also, mine I ask, add, I don't eat Cajun food out to eat, and if you make your gumbo within an hour, I'm not eating it. There you go. Period. <laughs> So when I'm cooking jambalaya, uh, gumbo, etouffee, this is my go-to season. It's a, one of my cousins from Santa Monica, Sorrento. He grew up in Sorrento. He now lives in Gonzales. His name is Kim LeBlanc. It is a phenomenal season. It has a balance. You can use whatever seasoning you want. You can use Tony's. There's so many seasons out there. I love K Fred's out of uh, Louisiana. Um, there's plenty of seasons out there. Use whatever you want. Put whatever you want. No, use this. There you go. Use this. <laughs> so we're going to use this for everything. And I like black pepper, so we're going to add some black pepper towards the end. So, guys, whenever I cook on my TikToks and I use Creole seasoning, everyone has a cow daddy. Like, they say, how do you put that on everything? It's salty. It's spicy. It's just not balanced. I grew up on this. This is what we put on every. This is our salt and pepper. Like, yep. that's what we use, and it's so everything. different. That is so different. No, it, it's not even salty. It's so different compared to what like yep. Tony's is exactly that's Tony's not no Tony's has a little bit of salt in it I don't like the salt but this stuff has a balance and it is phenomenal it's all we cook with in our house when we're cooking stuff like this I use a variety of other seasonings I got a whole cabinet full of seasonings. yeah but like spaghetti eggs tacos we use that oh, everything right here where can I find it you can find it on Amazon it's hard to find but you got to go to Santa Monica Louisiana or Sorrento or Gonzales it's on the shelves. That's where I pick it up when I go. I used to buy it directly from my cousin, but I don't cook as much as I used to. I used to buy the big boxes and mm -hmm. the big containers. So I just buy it from the local stores when I go. We use it for everything. So I want to add in, look at this outfit. We love the fit, bro. This is my country outfit. This is what I wear <laughs> when I'm outside. Supposed to be working right now, but I would rather be with Drew than doing anything else right now. Aww. The first thing we're gonna do, we got the water heating for the uh, chicken. We're gonna make a chicken stock, like I said. We're gonna put the chicken in there, and then we're gonna debone the chicken. When I use chicken, I don't like the bones in there, but when I do a hen, I don't care for the, I, I don't mind the bones being in there. My sister always says bones flavor, so there's a lot of truth for that. So, but a regular chicken, it breaks up. So we're just gonna put deboned chicken in the gumbo. But this is the pot we're gonna make the gumbo out of. You I don't have your gumbo pot though. No, I didn't bring the Magnolite. I would have made it in the Magnolite. This is a, a, a bigger pot. I've had this for a long time. And um, it's one that I can use on the stove. And this is the one we're gonna use today. So we're gonna cut up bell pepper, celery, and onions. It's called the Cajun Trinity. I don't know where this uh, Holy Trinity stuff come from. Growing up, it was called the Cajun Trinity because there's only one Holy Trinity. But Period. Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and all this stuff comes around, and now it's called the Holy Trinity. We didn't call it the Holy Trinity going up, so y'all don't beat Drew up. We called it the Cajun Trinity. So this is going to be the Cajun Trinity. We used the center of the um, celery. My mama said, always said that it was the sweetest part of the celery. I hated celery growing up. And when I got older and started cooking, my mama would always fuss at me. I'd call a collect because we didn't have cell phones back then. 
and she would say, make sure you use celery. Make sure you use celery. So we do not cook without celery. Mama said. Mama said. Love it how you love the electric like you do. Love it how you love the electric always you. Now, if my dad were to chop these up, every single vegetable would be a perfect square and they would all be the same size. Um, yeah, mine are all different, especially my onion. I don't know what happened, but hopefully my dad won't judge me for that. LOL. <laughs> but he's getting the chicken ready. We're doing a, oh, you're actually doing a hen. No, it's just a big chicken. Oh, wait, what's all the right, difference? All right, so go back to the vegetables. My grandfather on my mama's side was a Spaniard from Italy. I know that sounds odd. There's a huge Spanish community in Italy, thousands and thousands of acre, uh, miles wide. I can't think of the name of it right offhand. And that joker could cook. So he would, he would cut up all his vegetables at different sizes because he felt like a smaller vegetable cooked faster than the bigger vegetable and they would cook across the board. They wouldn't cook all at one time and they'd cook across the board. Perfect. I don't know if that's true or not, but so know. maybe my, my vegetables are good. Yeah, so your vegetables are good. All right. So we're just going to half this chicken. That's all we're going to do. So what's the difference between this and a hen? A hen is a um, bigger, thicker, the boss, the boss chicken. The boss chickens? Yep. Yeah. And uh, I love chickens like that. So... It's just the meat's tougher, the, the, the chicken itself is tougher, and is um, that's just some, I don't know, <laughs> stuff I just take out. I don't eat it when I eat at Popeye's, so I take it out whenever I'm cooking with it. Oh. So a lot of people take the skin off, a lot of people put the hearts and the gizzards in there. I don't like all that, so I don't put any of that in there. You take the skin so, off? Yeah. So take the lid off. All right, so I put some seasoning in there, seasoning in there. I might have put a little bit too much. I usually just put a little bit just for the flavor. And um, some people like to put vegetables in there to make their stock. I don't do that. We'll talk about the vegetables later. All right, so since Drew said we're gonna make an authentic gumbo, we're gonna make a roux. Well, we usually use this brand and this brand only. That is the best roux. I cannot make a roux better than that right there. So, <laughs> there's Nona. So, I'm old. I get tired easy. I'm sweating from being outside. I don't want to spend two hours over the stove making a roux when I don't want to have to make a roux. So when I was in my 30s, 20s, I traveled a lot. I'd been gone for a while. I walk into my mama's house and I smell roux. My mama made everything from scratch, everything. And I smell a roux, but I can't find the roux. It's in the microwave. She made a roux in the microwave and I was devastated. I felt like my childhood was stolen because my mama made her roux on the stove and she made it in the microwave. Did it taste good? It was phenomenal. It tastes just like a roux. You would never so you know. make your roux however you want to. I make mine out of the jar. So it's been a while since we made, since we made a roux. And Momo makes it in the microwave. Momo, Momo don't make nothing anymore. She don't cook anymore. She's still kicking, but she ain't. Uh, that's going to offend some people. She's still kicking. That's what she says. I'm still kicking. Momo says that. She's 88 years old this week. Aww. So, phenomenal cook. And my sisters are all great cooks. 
Yeah. Most of my brothers are good. Well, all my brothers are good cooks, except for my oldest brother. Drew is actually going to make this roux. Oh, I am? So. I thought you made roux out of butter. You can. You can make a butter roux. We make a butter roux when we make an etouffee. Oh, those are the best. So how do you, what happens if it gets chunky? Well, it's got to even out, but that's why you got to stand here and do this over and over and over and over. <laughs> You just stir and you stir and it starts cooking. The, the oil starts cooking the flour. It starts changing cover colors. I like a dark roux, so we're going to see how long we can go with this. So it's starting to cook. It's starting to heat up a little bit. It's starting to get a little thicker. The flour will start cooking. In about 10 minutes or so, it'll start changing colors again. And uh, so far, so good. Okay, we're an hour into this. And it's still the same Two color. Hours five minutes. Yeah, it's been five minutes. <laughs> All right, so I just turned the heat up just a little bit, just a tiny bit. I'm used to cupping, cooking on flames. I don't like a, a, flat top. a, a flat top, but it is definitely starting to change. It's getting there. This is not fun for me. I like it. I cook mine in a jar, and it is it is great. I'm going to show you all again so y'all can see. You can only get this in Louisiana, huh? Yeah, they are rice farmers. Uh, they're, they're, they're from Louisiana. They've been in the Beaumont area for years and years and years, and they're rice farmers. They made the roux, and I can tell you, I'll take that roux over any roux I can make or or uh, any roux that's out there. Two hours into this, <laughs> and it's starting Two to change, and it's starting to turn colors, and it's starting to look like a roux. So I don't know if I'm gonna make it, but y'all, y'all stay tuned. So this is about the color my mama would make. She would not make a really, really dark roux. This is where she would stop. She would let it cool down and uh, start over again. No, just say we're gonna win. So we're going to let this go just a little bit longer, a little bit darker, and then we're going to turn it off. We're fixing it. This is about as dark as I'm going to get it, and uh, we're fixing to turn it off. All right, so at the beginning of the, the video, we said make your gumbo the way that you want to. We all make gumbo different, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. Make it like you long. Your like. way just happens to be the best. So, <laughs> so we yeah. were taught you put your vegetables in your roux. I stopped doing that about 15 years ago whenever I went to a um, restaurant in New Orleans. One of my favorite chefs, his name is Donald Link, and they had a um, duck gumbo. And they did not put their vegetables in the in the roof. And he grew up in Cajun country, somewhere around Rain, Louisiana, somewhere up in there. Dude knows how to cook. So I stopped putting my vegetables in the roof. A lot of people are going to have a hard time with that because that's the way we grew up and that's the way we knew how to cook gumbo. So Drew abandoned me. She went uh, antique shopping. So I added the, the stock. It's a long process because it's a lot of roux. So I stir it and I stir it and I stir it and I stir it so it doesn't stick. So it's really thick. So now I got to let it cook down and it's going to cook down for a couple of hours. Then I'm going to add my vegetables because I want to be able to taste my vegetables. And then we'll talk sausage. All right, so we're about to put the onions in the, uh, in the gumbo, the uh, Cajun Trinity. I like to add half the sausage that I'm putting in. I want to taste the sausage. So I don't want to, I don't brown it. I don't put it in the, uh, in the roux. I want to taste the sausage. So we make our own andouille. Andouille is um, coarse ground. It's a little um, leaner. It's heavily smoked and it's got a little bit more spices to it. Just cause it says andouille in the store, doesn't mean it's andouille. Okay, so we added the Cajun Trinity and half of the sausage. I like the smoke flavor. It starts, uh, gelling into the gumbo. We're gonna let this go for about another 30, 40 minutes, and then we're gonna add our chicken. I like to use chicken thighs, so we're gonna add some chicken thighs along with our deboned chicken that we started from the very beginning. And our potato salad is in the fridge marinating. Done.
Take the salad, done. Oh, he just put the chicken in there. It is now like four o'clock. We've been doing this since like 10 a.m. Putting in the deboned chicken. I already got the chicken thighs in. It's been a long day. We're wore out. Fixing to put the rest of the sausage in. All right, so we made some rice. <clears throat> Sticky white rice. Extra long grain. Like a lot of juice with my gumbo. We like it thick. You can see how thick it is. Lots of chicken, lots of sausage. All right, so anyway. A lot of sausage. A lot of chicken. We like it thick. We will not have the argument over where the potato salad goes. Because I don't give a crap where you put the potato salad. The top, the bottom, the side, <clears throat> outside. Drew made some phenomenal potato salad. It goes on the top. Whatever. I don't I don't care. I think it's silly that it's even a conversation. Actually, it goes on the bottom. But anyway, normally we have big gumbo bowls and the rice goes in the middle. But you can see how thick it is. I've already tasted it. Tastes good. This is just how we cook a gumbo. It's nothing fancy. It's just an old-fashioned South Louisiana gumbo. We put green onions on top. Got that green onions. And... Oh, made a mess. Uh -huh. I think anyway, we made a, I think put we made green a onions mess. on top. And that's how we eat it. So how many hours did this take you? About six, seven... And it'll, I'll leave it on low and cook it for another couple hours. Take a taste. Take a taste. I already uh, tasted it. I'm about it's to make, hot. I'm about to make me a big old bowl. And then we're going to eat some and we're going to do a mukbang and answer questions. So you guys come back for that video. Tastes like gumbo to me. If you want to see more videos of me and my dad cooking together, comment down below what you want to see next. He knows how to make literally everything. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye, y'all.